best, I'm the chair. Uh, you have the minutes of the previous meeting and the agenda for today. Welcome. And welcome. Okay, thanks, Dan. So uh, the first item or first substantive item, I'll pass you over to Will Barfield. Um, so, uh, Will, if you'd like to give a, an update on the future plan works. Hello, everybody. Yes, I'm, I'm Will Barfield. I'm the asset manager in the council's estates and facilities team, and I've been asked to give a, a, a brief summary of the council's future planned maintenance um, work. So I'm going to share my screen with some um, details on it for you. Which hopefully you can see. Can you just see the main slide now? Yes. Thank you. So um, yeah, I'm Will Barfield. I'm this um, asset manager within the states and facilities team. Um, just for a bit of background, um, estates and facilities with the part of the council that deals with repair and maintenance of the council's housing stock, and that includes leasehold flats. Um, we um, we aim to have a, um, a proactive approach to, to maintaining our housing stock and blocks of flats, and we have a five year um, programme of work, so we aim to plan things out in advance, and we're looking to try and make sure we maintain the decent home standard in all of our accommodation and we keep our housing in good condition, um, therefore hopefully avoiding any serious defects and minimising responsive repairs, which can be expensive. Um, we have a so survey programme in place. We inspect all of our properties. We aim to have a five year cycle and there's, there's numerous other um, ways which we survey our properties through our painting programmes and individual um, one off surveys. In terms of delivering planned works, to council flats and leaseholder flats. We have quite a large programme of work. This year's programme, for example, is around £24 million pounds, um, and we've got a similar amount next year. We have experienced some delays as a result of all the COVID lockdowns and then some supply chain delays caused by Brexit and supply chain issues across Europe, really. Um, we have a range of different contracts to deliver works and we try and work through um, long term agreements Obviously, from a leaseholder point of view, we consult with you before we enter into those long term agreements. At the moment, we've got one with TSG Building Services, which mainly does internal works to our flats and houses, so it doesn't affect leaseholders so much. But then we also have another contract with Foster Property Maintenance, and that deals with most of the external works around the estates, things like roofing, doors and windows, painting repairs, floor coverings and works to communal areas. And that's the part of our work which we often have to consult with the leaseholders before we start that. We've got lots of other contractors as well that we procure to do one off projects and. Um, they don't always affect leaseholders in quite the same way, but certainly where we've got works where we think the contribution from a leaseholder is going to be more than 250 pounds, then we will do the section 20 notification working with our home ownership team part of the council. And just for your reassurance, if, if we are doing work to lease our properties, we always seek to get at least three quotes for work from our contractors to make sure that we are demonstrating best value for money in, in the work that we do. So I'm going to talk a bit about sort of some of the current issues that are affecting um, the future planned works that we have within our within our plan. Um, we do fire risk assessments of all of our blocks. Um, on a, on a, generally on a three year cycle, some blocks get a fire risk assessment every year um, and that the fire risk assessor identifies works that we need to do and following the Grenfell Tower fire, um, which I'm sure you're, you're all aware of, there's been um, lo lots of focus on fire safety, particularly in blocks of flats. So we've been reviewing our fire risk assessments and we've got a program of work around that. There's also obviously at the moment improving energy efficiency to, to council property is, is high on the, on the council's agenda and we are developing um, programmes of work to improve energy efficiency to flats and houses. We've also got um, 
quite a large program of work looking at structural repairs to blocks of flats because a lot of our housing estates were built in the in the 1960s and 70s so they're reaching an age where they're sort of becoming 50 or 60 years old and although we might have repaired windows and doors and roofs in the past it's now reaching the stage where some of the concrete and brickwork elements of properties are starting to need more significant repairs of interest to you as leaseholders there might also be the fact that we're um there's lots of communal parts within blocks of flats um there's sort of main entrance doors floor coverings staircases access control and other various installations um, external areas um where we have to repair and maintain those and like there's like the structural areas i just talked about they're all built when the flats were built so they're reaching an age where they need repairs and maintenance carried out we have a um a cycle of carrying out electrical testing to landlords electrical installations in your blocks um there's probably um lighting maybe emergency lighting door access systems television amplifiers and various other bits of equipment within the blocks of flats and they will have electric supplies and some of those are getting older and we need to be looking at starting to replace the wiring that goes to the various um, electrical installations within the buildings. And then we have a, a proactive um, program of estate, in, estate investment schemes at the moment. The council has invested five million pounds over a five year period to look at um, improvements around the estates. Um, and that particularly includes street lamp columns and communal lighting that I've mentioned here. We've got two large programmes which we're hoping to complete this year and next year to um, really improve and bring up to date the lighting around the estates. Another issue which I'm going to mention in a moment is um, procurement and how we actually um, we need to select a new contractor for some of this work and how that impacts. I've got a few examples of the types of work that I've just sort of put the headings for there. So fire safety improvements. Um, we've got planned fire alarm install installations at Kingsway Flats, Hanover Court and Princess Court. And then we've also identified through our fire risk assessments that a number of fire compartmentation works are required at Kingsway Flats, Hanover and Princess Court. We've also um, implemented last year and will be continuing next year a fire door inspection programme of all doors that either are already fire doors or that might be fire doors within our flats and that includes leaseholder flats and all store sheds um, this is to make sure that fire doors are actually um, doing their job and are compliant doors and also in respect of fire safety improvements we've got um, we're replacing a number of the lighting installations with emergency lighting in communal areas where this is required by a fire risk assessment and some of our low level blocks of flats have actually got timber cladding within the blocks and we've got about 85 staircases where there's timber cladding and what we're looking at is whether it's more cost effective to keep treating it with fire retardant paint or whether it would be better just to take it out and replace it with something else um, with regard to stru um, structural works and concrete repairs we've got quite a large program of repairs going on at hazelwood and more close at the moment um, repairing old concrete lintels and doing brickwork repairs and we've got a future programme that we're going to be looking at next year for the blocks in Bermuda Terrace, where we know there's some evidence of um, some structural work and works to walls that needs to be carried out. We'll be continuing our programme of work to the King's Hedges estate. Um, we've already done work at Aragon, Sackville and Woburn Close, um, strengthening the balconies, and we need to continue to that work at Nicholson Way, Hanson and Walker Court, and that work is programmed in for next year. We've got a program of work of structural repairs at Hanover and Princess Court, and that's essential work there. Um, we're looking to tender shortly. Um, and also in the South Arbury area of the city, um, places like Cockle Road, Purseway, Rutman Close and Brackley Close, where we've got blocks of maisonettes. We've got a similar program of balcony um, strengthening and waterproofing and various brickwork repairs and the same type of work at Fanshawe and Davy Road Flats. Just got a few more areas to tell you about before I've finished. Um, communal and emergency lighting, which I briefly touched on before. We are planning to replace all the city council's own street lamp columns in. Well, we were aiming to do it by the end of by last Christmas, but the programme got delayed for various reasons. So we're looking to start that contract very shortly. And then next year 
we're planning to survey and replace all of the communal lighting in all our blocks of flats um, where we haven't installed emergency lighting more recently, so we won't be doing that work again. And any new lighting we install now is all LED lighting, which not only saves energy, obviously reduces service charges, but it should also improve reliability and make sure we're not having lights um, faulty and flickering within the blocks. Landlord electrical installations. Um, we, we've carried out um, electrical checks in all of the blocks. And as I said before, many of these are old and need of replacing, and we are developing a programme of work. Um, we were looking to start in um, Kingsway Flats and Hanover and Princess Court, but um, there's numerous other blocks where we're looking at that work, including um, the South Derby Maze Nets area, which I just referred to, and it's likely that they might be the first ones that we do as part of the other structural work that we're doing next year. In terms of door entry systems, a lot of our blocks of flats with more than four flats have got door entry systems access control. We've got over 100 blocks with door entry systems, and many of these were installed in the 1980s and 90s and are getting old and in need of replacement. And we've start developing a plan program to replace those starting in next year in 2023 in the Cockrell Road flats. We've got some prices for those and we'll be consulting on that. And then we've got repairs to staircases, handrails and balusters. A lot of blocks that were built in the 50s and 60s and 70s have got hand staircases um, to reach first floor flats or second floor flats. And many of those have got wide gaps between the balusters and handrails are really too low to meet modern standards. So we're carrying out repairs to bring um, to make those safer. And we've been doing that for the last few years and we've got an ongoing program to complete work to all space staircases over the next two to three years. Finally, I'm just going to tell you about um, one of our main con contracts with TSG Building Services is ending in the end of 2022, and we've started the process to re-procure that contractor. Um, it doesn't have a massive impact on leaseholders, but some of the services delivered by the contract do in that they maintain lifts and lighting and fire alarm systems, um, uh, things like door entry systems and electrical work in communal areas. So if we are planning that type of work, um, there may well be section 20 consultations for leaseholders around that. When we're tendering the work, um, leaseholders will all be automatically consulted because we're planning to enter into a new long term agreement. And as per always, when we do a procurement of this nature, um, we will invite tenant and leaseholder representatives to be involved in the selection process of, of that new contractor. That was everything that I was planning to cover. Uh, thank you very much. I mean, I don't know if there's any um, questions or whether you want to introduce that. Thanks, Will. Um, I can't see any hands up, but does anyone want to um, ask any questions? If you do and you don't know how to put your hand up, just unmute yourself and, and start talking. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rachel. Hi there. Can you hear me OK? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I joined slightly late. Um, I just sort of wanted to check, really. I'm I've got a flat in Edgecombe and um, the floors were redone and I felt the quality. They replaced black floors with sort of blue, which looked quite dirty quite a lot of the time. Um, the quality didn't look that great. They also filled in those sort of banisters, as you sort of mentioned. And again, they kind of sort of ruined the look of it. I'm kind of concerned that some of these works ruin the aesthetics and some emergency lighting was replaced. Some old lighting was taken off. Some new was kind of put on somewhere else. It wasn't painted over where the old light fitting had gone. I had to have a real to and fro with the council about getting that work redone. I'm just kind of concerned that the quality isn't <laughs> sometimes there. And I'm also concerned if work's going to be requested to be done again so are the floors going to be done again are the banisters going to be done again i mean it's kind of this sort of there's the sort of quality assurance aspect and also there's the ruining the character of the the building i do understand there are kind of certain safety issues but sometimes it feels that work's kind of being done for the sake of it 
which is a big concern really because then sort of big bills start landing on your doorstep and I'm sure it's a big concern to to everyone just a few things there but those are those are my concerns and that's why I'm attending today can I come shall I respond can I respond to that um Thank you. I mean, they're, they're really good points, particularly about the aesthetics of new works that we try and integrate into existing estates. Um, and that, that's quite a, a difficult thing to do. We're, we're conscious, for instance, with the staircase improvements at Edgecombe Flats. Um, and no, we won't be doing it again. That, that's one of the areas where we've done already. So we call that housing health and safety rating system um, improvements, where the, the gaps or the handrail wasn't high enough. So we've done some work. Um, Obviously, one option is to completely take it out and replace it with something that looks the same, um, but then meets the modern standards. But that can be really expensive to do that. So often what we've done is try to make repairs to the existing staircase, maybe by adding in balusters or putting something on the existing handrail to make it taller. But I do agree with you. Um, and we have experienced some quality issues with contractors not matching in things very well or not, you know, staining new or to match existing wood. Um, so we don't intend that it's not aesthetically pleasing, but I do understand that in some cases where we try to repair rather than completely replace, it does lead to something which clearly looks like it's been added on to. So I understand that. Um, the decorating thing that you've referred to, we do try, although we're not always successful, we try and coordinate the works that we do within blocks. So it either we, we, know, we know how it links in with our painting programme, because we have a painting programme for all the communal areas. So ideally, if we did a lot of invasive work in communal part um, in one year, it would be followed up by the painting programme. But um, I'm conscious that doesn't always happen in all cases and then it means that contractors that disturb bits then should be making it good and um you know it, it may not be quite as aesthetically pleasing as, as you mentioned so i think it's just part of the, the challenge of refurbishing and retrofitting things um to meet the standards but we're conscious of not replacing things entirely which would be much more expensive than repairing i don't know if that helps but um it we're does, it we're does certain, help. We're certainly, we're certainly aware of it. Um, it does and, help, and Will. I mean, and that. I absolutely wouldn't want those wooden banisters coming out, then the, the leaseholders no. taking the hit of paying for Precisely. a replacement when the banisters are perfectly good. It is the sort of the quality of the thing. You know, people live there. You know, they don't want, <laughs> tight, you know, the, the flooring kind of on the, the rising part of the steps. Some of it was kind of coming loose. I think it's better. I think it has been fixed but you know kind of having where lights are taken off and not sort of painted over properly it's it's homes I know it's sort of jobs and sort of contractors and things like that but these are these are homes and they've got to be kind of done to the sort of standard that one would want in their I mean, home. I think, yes I mean thank them I and that's really good feedback and we'll we'll try and pick up on that our aspiration is to deliver a you know really excellent customer service and we aim to get really good feedback from our customers to through contractors for the work that's done so um we'll certainly pick that up and um i say we are when we are re-procuring and rewriting specifications for our contracts at the moment and we're extending one of our other contracts so we'll make sure we pick up on those quality issues and make sure we can um see if we can improve on that thank you thank you okay next questions from Jing. oh hello hi hi Good morning. Um, I have a flat in Crawford Close, uh, CB4 to US. Um, my flat number is number eight. And I have a few questions to ask. Um, the first of all is our, our communal doors. We have like three families in the block. We have three doors in a small um, communal area with a staircase. But I think those doors have not been designed um, fit, uh, fit for purpose because they are not self-closing and they don't have an automatic locking system. So basically, when people going out, I always lock the door, but people go out, they don't lock the doors. So and it's very unsafe at night because we lose bikes, we lose things. And also, previously, my neighbor, um, number nine, have has somebody break in, trying to break in his 
her door and we have policemen coming over as well. So I think um, if you can reveal the communal doors downstairs um, to be replaced with self-closing or maybe just change the locks or maybe add a door closer could be cheaper. So those kind of self-closer is only a hundred pound and maybe change a locking system. So I think that's quite important because people come into our communal staircase and, and smoke um, drugs and stuff. So we can smell we can smell it. That's very unpleasant. Uh, so this is first question. And the second, um, you mentioned about the electrical installation uh, inspections. And I because I have not heard anything from the council and that could be covered. So I did it myself last year. Is I spent like one thousand two hundred fifty pounds for the inspection for the report and also the I pay for the electrician for the rectification works because our whole system is very old. So I don't know if that can be reimbursed in some way or um, if you can give some information. That'd be great. And. The third question is fire safety improvements. Um, because we have different families living in the block. So in the communal staircase, underneath the staircase, the space has been, they have put in some bulky items like unused furniture and it's a fire risk. So can anyone um, give notice or speak to the neighbors? because we don't know who they are and we don't want to be unfriendly with our neighbors. So if the council can help, that would be great. Um, the final question is about improving energy efficiency. So um, we have, I have done some EPC um, inspections. So our roof have very, very minimum insulation about 50 mil, less than 50 mil, and external wall is like, um, you know, the white form has been retro inject some some sort of insulation, but it's way below the standard we we should be having um, for the thermal insulation. So it's way way low. It's required, and um, but I don't know when this improvement work can happen to our flat. And because I know the council have many, many properties, sometimes they just start from the bigger blocks and our small blocks, and we don't know when and where, if any, any timetable can give us um, um, some information about that, that would be great. Because we have done all we can. I have changed all the window and doors. Um, so, you know, and, and but we don't own the fabric of the building. Um, we just need some information about that. Thank you very much. OK, shall I just shall I start with answering some of those and maybe Will Beavitt might want to come in on some of the thing about the, the, the fire aspects. But um, in terms of the communal doors, we introduced a communal door um, um, upgrade replacement program into our capital plan a couple of years ago, um, and we, we've started work on that. So you said Crawford close, didn't you, which is up in the King's Hedges area, is that right? Um, so we will, be getting, we will be getting there at some point. Um, our criteria at the moment is communal doors in flats, which are sort of more than 30 years old and in poor condition. So I'm not sure if your door's actually been inspected there yet, but we've, we've got a programme last year and this year and next year sorted out for um, communal doors. Um, it will certainly be on the list, but we haven't got a programme date um, yet for it. Um, and when we did re improve those doors, we would obviously put closing devices on it. We've only got door entry systems in blocks of more than four at the moment, but um, this is the sort of thing that perhaps could be added to some sort of estate improvement programme at some point in the future, although I'm not sure um, that that's one which um, the team is actually looking at at the moment, but we can certainly make a note of that for consideration. With regard to the electrical test you mentioned, we only do tests for the landlord parts. I don't think you would probably have commissioned a thousand pounds test for the landlord's installation. Maybe that was just for your installation within your property, but we only um, do the landlord's installation um, there. 
Um, with regard to the third question about fire safety and things in the staircase, Will, do you want to come in there? We'll leave it. Yeah, <clears throat> we can answer that in more detail in question seven. We're talking about fire safety then. OK, but just to say that we we will visit. So thank you for letting us know. We'll address that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And your fourth question was around energy efficiency and insulation. Um, we do have a program of refilling old old cavity wall insulation and we're actually doing we've just done Kingsway flats you're right so we did start with the big block that was grant funded and we're aiming to carry on with that and get as much grant funding as we can while it's available um we will be developing a program but i'm afraid i haven't got a program of exactly when we would get to your specific flat at the moment and with regard to the roof insulation though i'll make a note of that because where we have got properties with um, less than 200 mil of loft insulation, we're trying to upgrade those. So I'll make a note of the, those addresses and we'll check those to make sure. And if it needs to be done, it can be added to our programme of work um, next year. Thank so. you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is Aniko. Uh, yes, hello. Um, I'm, I'm a leaseholder at um, Hanover Court, and I would like to uh, follow up on Rachel's comment. That's exactly the reason why I joined in today, because when I started to see these letters coming in with the uh, with the list of works, it's just um, uh, from uh, in the period from uh, 2000, I think it was 2017, 2019, we already paid about £10,000 for exactly the same uh, works and I'm just I'm just worrying about and when I see uh, the work that is done the quality is so poor and uh, I would like to just find out if there is a if you are if there will be works done for the, exactly the same things and all these bills coming in it's just it I don't think it's fair because if you pay for something like ten thousand pounds you expect it to last for you know at least uh, you know a couple of decades but it's 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 just uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, how much more we're going to need to pay for exactly the same things for the lift, for um, the balconies being changed just recently as well, and the roof uh, works. And and it's it's just um, I just uh, you know just some reassurance that you know that and if someone could actually put uh, maybe a report together, the money that we spent from to, to when, for the last uh, big project. And you know what they've been spent on, and what they're going to do next. The no, next um, a slot of works. So if they are repeating the same works, and we're paying, again, we're paying money for the same works. It's just um, I don't think it's uh, it's it's not very clear. And you know I would like to get a little bit you know more information about this. Thank you. Um, that's probably quite a difficult one for me to answer in, in detail in, in a meeting like this, but certainly with Hanover Princess Court, we have had, you're probably referring to the structural works we've done, then we have had two previous phases of structural work. It wasn't doing the work and then doing the same work again. It was doing different areas, but obviously we had to call it, we did call it structural works and then structural works. And then we've got a, a third phase of structural work that we're doing now, but it is actually to different parts of the building. What happened um, before is that we got so far with the works and then the more we were there and seeing things at high level, more work was um, needed to be done. So we, that's why we're looking at a third phase of essential so, work. Yeah, maybe then if someone, yeah, because there was some some uh, works um, for the, um, the the staircases as well and um, um, the floor coverings and it looks, the list looks looked very similar to what it was before. So maybe, yeah, that's why if, 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 if the report could be put together just to show which works and where it's been done. But the balconies were definitely done maybe about five years ago. And now, they get, you know, it's the same. So we're just going in circles for, yeah, I understand the structural works for the, it's, it's difficult to, for us to, to identify, you know, just uh, for looking at, uh, into looking at this, but just uh, and having an idea how much more, you know, how much money it will cost us, you know, for this uh, next uh, big uh, project. That would be great. Thank you. Yes, OK, so I think maybe what, what we need to pick up from what you're saying is that when we're doing any further consultation or telling people about more works is um, spell it out in some detail what it is so you can see exactly what it is that you're paying for and to make it clear it's not 
just the same thing over and over again. We maybe need to put Thank more you. detail into those into those letters. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Matt, you, uh, sorry, Matthew Emerson, do you want to go next? Hi. I was just going back to the energy efficiency stuff. Um, uh, I'm living on Litchfield Road, and uh, it's great that you're putting in new windows and stuff to some of the uh, other properties around here. Um, so, I think the first question was. Is is there a way to get my uh, windows done as part of that those improvement works uh, with me paying for the work to be done? Um, because obviously it will be in keeping with the rest of the building and look better. And the second was, is there any uh, more energy efficiency stuff planned for uh, sets of flats um, possibly around my area or the smaller maisonettes uh, regarding roofs or uh, solar panels or anything like that in the future. Okay, with the first point about windows, um, yeah, it is possible and um, our contractors sometimes do offer the, their services for door and window insulation to leaseholders in blocks at the same time. Um, Obviously, if that's something that you're interested in, maybe I can get your details from um, Emily later. We can follow up and put you in contact with the contractor to see if they're still able to do to do that. Um, with regard to energy efficiency works, that is a part of our programme that we're developing at the moment. We, we've got a number of different targets and certainly we want to try and make sure that all of our council properties are an EPC band of um, C, a C rated property by 2030 is our target at the moment. Um, we've got lots of properties which are, well, we haven't got many properties which are E rated. We've dealt with most of those. We've got hardly any which are F and G rated. So we're doing quite well, but we have got a lot of properties which are D rated and they tend to be solid wall houses. So houses with no cavity, um, which were built you know, in the in the 30s or, or 40s, maybe some of our older council houses. Um, and we've got a, a, a program, active program of externally installing wall insulation to those prop properties. And this year we've been installing wall insulation and solar property and solar panels to 150 properties in sort of the Darwin Drive, Aitman Street, Bateson Road area of town. And we've got all of those, a lot of those up to a B rating. So that was, I think we've got quite an achievement there. We've also got a uh, programme of installing loft insulation. And say we've started to look at refilling cavity wall insulation where it might have failed in some of our houses and, and blocks. We're also developing, developing a pilot project next year, which is to try and get a batch of houses to as close to what, what's called net zero carbon or you know zero carbon emissions uh, as we can. Um, we don't know whether that will be possible for 1930s council houses, but we're developing a program um, at the moment. And if once we get the costs for that and we find out what can be replicated in other houses, um, if the council gives us the budget to do it, then we will um, roll that out across other properties. I suppose in terms of energy efficiency as well, there'll be questions about how long we can carry on can, um, installing gas boilers in our council houses and in buildings with communal plant rooms and it's likely that in the future when we replace certainly gas in communal plant rooms if you live in a flat that's got communal plant that won't be with gas in the future it'll be some sort of electric heating system so there's a number of things we're looking at um insulation um Obviously, we have, a win we have a window program, so whenever we put windows in, they will, they're now triple glazed windows. When we put door, we have a large door replacement program, so when we replace doors, they'll be energy efficient as they can be. And when we re-roof, we will address loft insulation and roof insulation at the same time. So a lot of energy efficiency work is already integrated into our planned maintenance programs. But there's more that we're doing to look at individual blocks and houses. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I was just, one last question is, is how much can we do ourselves? Uh, I know this probably needs to be taken offline, but um, there's some bits that are part of the property and part of the deeds and everything, but some that isn't. That's a good question. Um, or maybe I won't attempt to answer, to answer that now, but that's maybe something which we could 
um, the, the council, it, we, we could get together with the um, asset team and the home ownership team to talk about what sort of information we could give to leaseholders about what people could do themselves if we haven't done that already. I don't know. OK, thanks. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. OK, so we're nearly coming to the end of this item. So we've just got two more questions. Uh, Shaney, do you want to go ahead? Hello, can you hear me OK? Yep. Yeah. Hello, I've got a suggestion. Um, the quality of the workmanship on the communal works has come up a couple of times. And I've got a very simple suggestion, which is that uh, the council just drop a letter round to all the affected flats or houses after works, asking for a bit of feedback um, and any comments um, and perhaps asking people to kind of rate how the work has been done. Thanks. Thank you, yes. I mean, that should happen with our contracts already, um, but I'm, we need, maybe need to follow up on that and make sure it is actually happening. Uh, there were certainly some slowdowns in that with, with when coronavirus was there and people were anxious about knocking on doors and contacting people and, you know, using PDAs and sharing things. But um, I think that's passed now and, and our contractors should be contacting everyone who's received planned maintenance work and asking for feedback via a sort of standardised form. So we'll, I'll follow up on that um, and we'll make sure that's happening. Thank you. OK, and finally, Ivy. Uh, yes, um, actually, I'm from the, the Rutland Close. So I want to know um, when the improvement work will start and uh, what time will we do for the, uh, the 10,000 money to the, to the council? So with a little bit of feedback in that question, I heard the part of it which said, when is the work starting? But then I didn't hear much more. But in um, to the Rutland close block of maize nets, which I think you're, you're referring to, um, the, we've done some design work and the work is we're planning to tender the work um, in January, um, January, February 2022, with a view to awarding that contract in um by the sort of late spring so the work would start in in late spring summer 2022 that's the plan so i didn't hear the second part of the question um i just want to know um because uh, uh when i asked her carol um she told me I would be and i want to know when do i have to pay for that money um Assuming the work is carried out in the financial year 2022-2023, we would expect to get our invoices back from our contractor by the end of March 2023. And then our home ownership team would, if, if we did that by the end of March 2023, then our home ownership team should be able to invoice you later on in 2023, I believe is the timetable for that for that work. Um, perhaps some of the lease old team can... And I think it would be sort of September, October 2023, you might get the bill for that. OK, thank you. OK, um, well, there's a few questions in the chat that um, relate to specific areas of the city and, and planned works. Would it be possible for you to have a quick look in there and then we can um, answer the questions either verbally at the end of the meeting in any other business or um, you can provide an answer in the chat and I can read them um, at the end of the meeting? Yeah, OK. Thank you. Lovely. OK, thank you well, much. thank you very much. So moving on to the uh, next item, we have um, James Ogle attending to uh, discuss the building cleaning um, contract tender. Hello, everyone. And I'm James Ogle. As, uh, introduced. Um, I work in environmental services development team as a project officer. I've been very much involved with the retender of um, the council's cleaning contracts, which is kind of range from car parks to our admin buildings, community centres and public toilets. It also includes uh, um, our, the housing assets. Um, we went out again to tender for the housing lot in August on the open market, which was advertised through the local government procurement portal. We've had, um, we had five tender submissions, which I believe we received at the beginning of October. Um, some of us have been appraising those for, I think, uh, three officers and two resident reps as part of the quality side and also the uh, finance side has been looked at by our financial um, well, accountants at the, at the City Council. 
Um, we do not have a preferred supplier as yet. Um, we, we've still got a few things to go through. There's probably about four steps before we'll, we'll, we'll have chosen a preferred supplier. Um, the first step is we need a bit more moderation for, from procurement. We have a meeting on the 6th of December with some resident reps and the officers who have been appraising on the quality scoring. Um, and then we need to finalise the scoring to enable us to inform the tenderers of the preferred supplier. And then once we've done that, we obviously can then start to talk to the preferred supplier and we need to talk a little bit more about their financial or who's who's ever financial because I think there's, there's, there's some questions with all of them just to make sure that they make their costings fair for each residence or res, you know each unit of, of obviously all within their overall cost envelope. So that's step three. Step four, if the no, it's basically establishing if the preferred supplier is happy to stick by the price and, and the contract. And then at that point, we'll be able to formally inform leaseholders through a section 20 notice. And I think others who are impacted by the cleaning contract on who um, we have chosen. I mean, this is likely to be suggest early February. Um, and then with the contract starting to commence with the new cleaning contract on the 1st of April 2022. Um, and that's it, really. I don't know if anybody's got any questions. Okay, um, Ivy, did you want to ask a question? Your hand's still up from, is it from the last question? Can you hear me? You're on mute. I have a question. I have a question. I don't know. It's on um, there's quite a lot of feedback from one of the uh, uh stop now okay um okay if i go in in order uh letty did you want to yes i was going to ask probably my volume is too high i'm not sure can you hear me okay can it's quite uh, loud yeah echoing yeah so i was going to ask you uh, Will mention um, some timber cladding works at HCOM. Yeah, if, and, uh, if, I would like to know uh, what it's about. Sorry. Okay, if we um, answer that in the any other business section, because we're we're on the contract uh, item at the moment. So if there's any questions that relate relate specifically to the building cleaning tender, then we'll okay. answer those now sure. and go back to that one. If that's okay. okay. Thank you. Um, Christina, do you have a question? Maybe that's from before. Can you hear us, Christina? Uh, we can't hear you, so I'm not sure if it's a problem with your microphone. I can see you've just come up there. If if um if you can't if we can't hear you, um if you can read uh, write it into the meeting chat, then we can answer it that way. Sorry about that. <laughs> um and then Matthew, do you want to go ahead? Uh yeah, this was about the cleaning. Um so as per the prior uh, people who were done with the cleaning, is there any gonna be any checking of quality and control? Um so I know that the previous uh, people weren't up to standard. And uh, how long do the next set of people appointed in uh, April 22, when, when do they get reviewed again? Um, they initially have a three year contract and then they have, we have an option to extend by a further two years and then another review period of another further two years. So it, it could be up to seven years of the contract. But after that first three years, we have a re re review point then. So we could go out again and get another contractor if they were not doing the job as we would expect it to, to the quality. And they should be okay. measuring quality anyway, and there should be lots of indicators to suggest how they're, you know, achieving the aims of the cleaning contract and they're doing the job well. Yeah, I can, on the monitoring side, I can add that one third of the blocks around this 
uh, city are checked every month. So in a three month period, we'd expect to have inspected everything. Out of interest, where do you live? Uh, Litchfield Road. OK, yeah. Yeah, so as the previous um, cleaners weren't quite up to scratch and several of the tenants around here had said that. So but I was just wondering whether uh, obviously you're going to keep check on the next set. So that's great. Thanks. I've seen a question in the conversation from Christina. Um, is window cleaning included or separate from the general cleaning provided by the contractors? It's actually separate. Um, it is. We have got a contract with high spec, and I suppose if your flat hasn't been window cleaned since you moved in in January 2021, it's something that our housing states officers can chase up on. Uh, is that right, Will? I don't know if it's Will in that area or it's um, yeah. And yeah, the, so they're done every uh, three times a year. The windows are clean. So the next clean is December and April and August. The other two cleans and our new provider high spec um, yeah, records when they get to site uh, by GPS and then we get a log where we can track. Yeah, where are you, please? Uh, so St Kilda Avenue flat. Oh, St. Kilda. oh yeah, that's, uh, that's my colleague Richard in the north. But yeah, we can check that. Thank you. So the next clean is due in December. Okay, so I don't think there's any further questions. Um, Ivy, did you have a follow up question at all? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, yeah, yeah it's, based, it's mainly about the uh, timber cladding. Oh, right. OK. Um, OK, if we if, if you just lower your hand for this one, then and then we'll, we'll answer that in any other business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. OK, so if there's no further questions for James, I will now uh, thank you, James, for attending. I'll pass okay. um, me over to Clive De Silva, who's going to give an update on planned maintenance contract tender. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just wanted to report in that uh, since we last met, um, Will and I have been busy uh, in a in a dark room putting specifications together and getting the tender documents together uh, we are at a stage now where um we have issued a notice um to to the market to uh, to to see people to register an interest and we had a supplier presentation day uh monday just gone uh to which we are very encouraged by the response and um, particularly everyone was particularly pleased about the amount of time that we've allowed for this complex tender to go forward so we're getting encouraging results my uh, the proposed timetable is that we are not intending to go to um, we, sorry we're intending to do a two-stage tender process and the first stage we are intending to go out to which is called the supplier selection um part of it um we're going out in january fe stroke february time where we'll do the put it out to uh, the marketplace and then we'll select uh, five suppliers out of those out of the responses by an evaluation panel so in march april time we are then looking to actually put out the the tender bid um, so that we can get returns in April, May time with a view to award around June, July, August, that kind of air, uh, that kind of time period. So we are pretty much in the stage where we've got a lot of the specification together and drafted now. And uh, Emily's been um, putting the putting the putting the right pressure on me to get those copies of the specifications and I'll be getting them over to her uh, this week. So. Uh, we're, we're at a stage where we will do a price and quality evaluation. Um, the price um, will have a percentage of, say, 30 percent of the weighting, whereas the quality of responses are going to carry 70 percent of the weighting. So it's um, pretty much a very intensive evaluation in which we will get um, representatives 
from leaseholders and tenants on a certain number of questions that to that are to be evaluated. So um, Will has already covered the scope, which is the TSG contract is what we are renewing. So it, it's that contract process that we are going through at the moment. So uh, we, we're, we're further on than when we last spoke, but we're still at early stages within this. Thank you very much, Clive. Uh, do we have any questions uh, about plan maintenance contract tender? Christina, you have your hand up. Is that in relation to this item? <coughs> no? um, OK, if you have a question and you're not able to and we can't hear you, just um, write it in the chat and we'll be able to answer that for you. Um, so I don't think there's any other questions, Clive. So thank you very much for joining us. I've got off lightly then. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, OK, well, I'll move on to uh, item six. So um, this is Dominic Lanch uh, giving us an update on subletting your property and information from town hall lettings. You're still on mute, Clive. I'm oh, sorry, not Clive, Dominic. Apologies. Yeah, I, I don't know how many times I've done that. I do apologise. Um, so mine is quite a brief one, really, and it's just aimed at those people who are um, subletting their um, leasehold properties. So really, it's just to make you aware that Cambridge City Council have a social lettings agency, Town Hall Lettings. Um, we operate in a similar way to a conventional lettings agency, but the, the sort of main difference being we, we offer a full property management service and guaranteed rents. Um, if it is the case that um, you needed advice uh, about letting your property. We we offer free advice. Um, so really, it's just the case that you know if if you if you are letting your property out, you want more information about what we do. Feel free to contact me um, uh, or Town Hall Lettings. We uh, um, the website is townhalllettings.com, um, and um, you know uh, I'm sure my contact details uh, can be circulated uh, at the end of the meeting yes <laughs> yeah uh, absolutely I, I i'll um i'll send you through all, uh, uh, some contact details so that you can get in touch with me directly we can circulate those with the minutes so um everyone Thank will receive you. a copy perfect okay so does anyone have any questions for dominic No, I can't see any hands up. So um, mm. if we receive any in the interim, uh, then I'll pass them on to you, Dominic. Thank you so much, Emily. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, no OK, so moving on to item seven, um, we have Will Beaver and Jamie Lambert um, attending to talk about the zero tolerance policy. OK, good. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Jamie Lambert. So I work alongside um, with Will Beaver. Um, I'm a relatively new role uh, that started in August of this year and um, my title is I work as a engagement education enforcement officer and that is predominantly in relation to fire safety. Um, what happens there is a, a number of members of the council go around and inspect properties and if there is identified issues they give me the ability to respond to them but also part of my job is inspecting flats and things for the zero tolerance policy in relation to communal areas. So how these are used, if they're being misused, et cetera. And then we look at responding accordingly to obviously what the identified issues are with those. So in short, my job involves obviously re-inspecting flats if there are issues, visiting new properties and obviously responding to any complaints and things as they come in. And I'll just screen share with you. I'll just give you an overview of where we're at at the moment. And it would also give you an idea when your relatively wards are going to be looked at or inspected. OK, so hopefully you should all be able to share, see my screen now. OK, I appreciate it is a bit small, but just to give you an idea at the moment. Um, Trumpeton Ward was inspected in August with a total of 13 flats or blocks 
and 11 of those have been checked. So we've got a completion rate there of 84%. And then we've got King's Hedges in September, considerably high amounts of blocks. Again, 141 blocks with 139 it's inspected with a completion rate of 98%. I will caveat, especially in relation to King's Hedges, there are a number of properties there that do need revisiting, re-inspecting for some issues that have been identified. And I have also obviously picked up earlier on on the um, issues with Crawford Close and the a revisit that will be required there. Um, we're now into October with Queen Edith's being inspected. And again, that's just five blocks um, in total with all five being inspected with 100%. And we are now moved into East Cheston for this month where we've got two blocks remaining out of the 15 to be inspected. But again, I'd caveat that with there's a number of issues there that do need revisiting and reinspecting. Um, to give you a further idea of when we will be then moving on to, we'll be looking at Cherry Hinton during the month of December. We'll be looking at Petersfield in January, West Chesterton in February, Abbey in March, Castle in April, Coleridge in May, and Arbury in June with Romsey, Newnham and Market taking up the remainder of July. Um, the simple reason of that being is that there's significantly less blocks of flats in those areas. Okay. Okay, if I stop to share my screen slightly and now move on to what I'll show you is some of the significant issues we faced. And these images basically represent complaints that have come in just solely over the last day or so. So if you look at, if you can see on the image to the left, there's clearly issues there in relation to the amount of things in the communal area obstructing the doors and fireways. And also if you look on the image of the right, obviously there's a significant issue there with a motor vehicle being kept inside a building. If we go further down, obviously we've got a obstruction hazard on the left where it's a top floor block of flats. And this is a trip hazard blocking the main entrance and exit only available on these locations and on the right again it's only entrance on high store block of flats where you've got a significant amount of cardboard dumped on the areas and and as, as last one we've now got so obviously these um, two motor vehicles both kept one's blocking a doorway and the other one is actually technically under a walkway for those properties and significantly close to to the actual stairway obstructing an issue for the upstairs flats. So we've got a number of ways that we are looking at combating these issues. And the first one example is here. We can, we've had significant issues with bulk storage mainly, especially in regards to large blocks of flats, especially if there's a number of families, number of children, etc. So we are looking at improving the areas with bulk storage and as you can see by the, both photos these are examples of bulk storage that we are fitting in certain areas where we've identified if there will be any issues with bikes and whether or not we can do anything to assist and this is an ongoing process and I believe that we are still looking at sites and still fit in bike storage areas as we speak. Okay if I just stop sharing my screen Okay, so just moving forward into November, um, as I said, a lot of this month has been taken up as reactive. I've had more complaints this month. I think the community magazine went out yesterday, a residence magazine, and on the back of that, I've already received five investigations that people would like me to go and look at and issues, which is great. You know, it's giving people an opportunity to report things through. As I said, the, the, we are still looking at various ways that we are combating these issues prior to taking enforcement action. That is obviously engaging with people and trying to educate them in the issues in relation to fire safety. Um, other ways we've been trying to deal with this is through community cleanup days, where we have encouraged residents to remove any rubbish from stairwells, from bin stores, from storage covers, etc. If they present a significant safety issue, and these have been the fantastic success and we are looking at identifying more areas to carry on through into next year. I've already covered the bike storage, but another part that we are looking at is blocking off stairwells uh, or underneath stairs, not the stairwells totally, uh, to prevent any storage of items in that. And again, if we can identify any areas where this can be done, 
we will consider it and look at the works being put in for that. And another service we're hoping to promote more, as I think it's a relatively decent service, is in regards to bulky waste collections. And that the council will pick up free items for £30 and it'll be in its five pounds for any additional item. Um, a lot of people aren't aware of the service that provides and it does take up to nine items. Um, one of the reasons is it's to prevent fly tipping and it's also to um, allow people to get rid of any waste that would be difficult for them to take to a tip, etc. And it's something that a lot, I believe a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of as that is a service that's provided and I think it's relatively good value for the service that is provided. And for the last part of what I've been asked to say is, uh, you know, in relation to enforcement action, we do work quite closely with the enforcement team on streets and open spaces, and they do take action in regards to littering and fly tipping for certain items of waste that are dumped. And the difference for your reference for fly tipping is anything over one black bag would be seen as fly tipping. One black bag and below would re realistically be seen as littering. Um, for offence to be an offence of fly tipping, you would realistically, it needs to be land that's open to the air and to which the public do have access. So that presents a slight issue, obviously, for communal areas where there's key card entry or entry systems in place because nor you could say that basically the public wouldn't ordinarily have access to give you an idea in relation to the fines the fines that are issued are in, for littering is 150 pounds for fly tipping it's 400 pounds reduced to 240 if paid within 10 days and they are relatively looking at a new offense which we call duty of care which is in relation to if you give your waste to somebody else or fail to dispose of your waste correctly. And again, that is very similar to fly tipping where you're looking at £400 if within 14 days and that is reduced to 240 over a 10 day period. Um, if you have got any questions in relation to what I've just gone through, please feel free to ask. Thanks, Jamie. Um, so we've got one question from Jing. Hello, hi. Um, my question is um, because I I can see the uh, electrical meters, the electrical cupboard is was designed underneath the staircase, so this is the only escape route for the flats above. Um, it is not comply. It doesn't comply with the current fire regulations. So. I'm, I'm actually yeah. looking at your fire risk assessment now, Jing, for Crawford Close, and it has got. Sorry, my name's Megan. I work. I'm a home ownership office, by the way, so I deal with a lot of the leaseholders' initial inquiries. And it does mention the electricity cupboard um, on a couple of issues. It said the electricity cupboard is being used for storage, um, and the electricity cupboard, the door should be upgraded to an, uh, a fire door. So, whilst we wouldn't probably look to ever move the location of the meters. It is being, has been noted, although this was carried out a couple of years ago, um, and that the electrical cupboard door should be kept locked. Um, so, but overall the fire risk rating for your block of flats, sorry, I'm just scrolling up, is, is tolerable, um, which is what pretty much all of our blocks of flats are. There's trivial, tolerable, moderate, and substantial. I'm not aware of any of our blocks of flats being trivial. I very rarely come across, I don't think I've ever come across the trivial option. I see tolerable a lot, I see moderate occasionally, and I'm not sure if I've ever seen a substantial. Oh, and there's also intolerable, sorry, that's trivial, tolerable, moderate, substantial, and in, intolerable. So intolerable would mean you'd properties would have to be vacated, substantial would mean um, urgent work for us to carry out, moderate would be swift work, but maybe not you know, today or tomorrow, and then tolerable is things that we add to a programme of works. Um, and that can be things like electrical cupboards. Often they mention about storage in the communal areas. There's a few things that will always be present on our fire risk assessments, like um, the present of waste chutes. So our blocks flats are built in a time there's lots of bin chutes and a lot of feeling is that they should be blocked up. But there are other issues where leaseholders have actually been sold a specific right of use of bin chutes. So if that was the only thing on a fire risk assessment, I, I believe 
um, it might be something for Will Barfield to confirm or someone in his team, um, that we're kind of satisfied that tolerable is a good level to be at. Um, and it might be something that we could get our fire officer, Steve, putting in another time for a chat about that. Thank you for that. Um, can I just ask, um, do you know what is the fire rating of the doors for the elect electrical cupboard um, in the fire risk assessment? It, it, it says that it, I can provide, but if anybody wants a, risk, a fire copy of their fire risk assessment, I can provide it. Um, if you live in a block of flats where you don't have a communal area, you won't have one. So properties like Racing Way, Fortescue Road, Rustat Road, you won't have a fire risk assessment. So it just applies to flats with communal areas. Um, it just says, it is recommended that the following doors are replaced with fire resisting doors or upgraded to be fire resisting. And it says the electrical cupboard door. Yeah, so, the reason the reason I ask is there's a difference between the 30 minutes fire door and a one hour and two hours fire door. If, for example, if I'm working on my own project, I'm an architect, I would put a two hours fire door if we have an electrical cupboard like that underneath the staircase, which is more expensive. However, well, that, I believe safety. More we would do. Um, I think we're fitting. Sort of what we require that doors have 30 minutes fire safe on front doors. Um, I'm not sure what the requirement would be for electrical cupboard doors. Um, but we can find out so we can add that to a list of what. If it's going to be done and what what it will be done with. For the residential building is two hours. Um, that's what we that's what I what I have to check and what I had checked and that's what we put in all our residential buildings as your reference. Maybe, maybe can you jump in on that with what we're fitting in our properties now? Sorry, that is just um, um, an, an issue related to fire safety. So. Potentially, Megan, um, Will's team could feed back on that and, and Steve can contribute. Steve's the fire safety officer and um, they'll be able to contribute to, to give an overview of what the, the standard that the City Council work to would be. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, OK, so the next question is from Matthew. Hi, uh, Jamie, it's more to do with the bike shed and stuff. Are you aiming to try and put in more communal bike sheds where possible or trying to uh, put in smaller um, lockable features within each kind of flats or properties because um, yeah basically we haven't got any uh, within our block and it would be nicer if there was a place for the, all the bikes to go um, rather than anything I just didn't know I wonder what your plan was or how you uh, plan to tackle different places with different properties I can different say, challenges yeah we are working on a program of installing uh, secure bike sheds around the city and yeah we've been trying different ones to see which ones residents find uh, yeah most effective and secure and combinations uh, ergonomic and uh, yeah people can use with limited dexterity I, our limiting factor with them has been locating suitable locations so we'd um, yeah, very much welcome any suggestions if um, yeah, residents and leaseholders identify areas uh, where they would be welcome and they can be installed. We um, Litchfield Road got one of our first ones as a trial and we're putting uh, yeah, three or four different ones um, around the site over the, the next few months. But yep, so as Will Barford mentioned earlier, there's a uh, yeah, programme of money uh, up to a million pounds a year that we're tapping into to yeah, to deliver that. Excellent, that's positive, thanks. I think there was a suggestion there as well from Shaney to have a, a bike store facility um, installed at Arbury Court. So uh, um, Shaney, we can pass that on to our colleague Richard, who is um, the equivalent role as uh, Will, but in the north of the city. Uh, so we can pass that suggestion over for consideration in the Estate Improvement Scheme Group. OK, all right then. Um, so it doesn't look like there's any further questions for this item. So thank you very much, Jamie and Will, for um, giving that really good overview of um, 
the, the programme you're working to. Um, so the next item is number eight, and it's from Diane Best, who is the leaseholder representative, and she's going to give an update about the Housing Scrutiny Committee. Hello, everyone. I'm Diane, who you elected to be your representative um, in July 2020 for the Housing Scrutiny Committee. Um, the January and March meetings continued to be online. The June meeting, we were able to have um, a physical meeting in the Corn Exchange. And in September, we were able to meet in the council chamber at the Guild Hall, but well spread out. To start with, I would like to refer back to Jamie's presentation and the photographs that he's shown you of the things that he's currently dealing with. Back in January, the resident representatives, that is your representatives on the Housing Scrutiny Committee and the resident inspectors had become very much aware of the sort of uh, fire risk problems that Jamie has shown you in the photographs. And as a result, and this is one of our real achievements, the resident representatives on the Housing Scrutiny Committee proposed the budget amendment for funding a new fixed term post, the education engagement enforcement officer which we felt was so necessary to dedicate it to delivering the council's zero tolerance policy and as a result I'm very pleased to say we've got Jamie in post and that was a real achievement and we really appreciate the work that he's doing so that was um our proposal at the January budget meeting. The other issue for leaseholders at the annual budget meeting in January is that the leaseholder administration charges are agreed, things like um, copies of the lease and so on, the things that leaseholders pay for individually. At the various meetings throughout uh, the year, we've received updates from estates and facilities regarding their service review and their compliance update. And you've been given information at this meeting about the fire doors. We're also um, kept updated about the new build council homes that are funded both through the combined authority and the work that's going on toward development of the new council house programme. Your reps have been involved in working with Emily on the resident involvement strategy, which received the executive councillor's approval. Clive and James have told you about the procurements for both the cleaning and the planned maintenance and there does before any of that can happen there does have to be uh, executive councillor approval to do these uh, procurements and I can reassure um, leaseholders and tenants that resident representatives tenants and leaseholders are involved um, in those uh, procurement evaluations. Um, another issue that may or may not be a bit controversial is the Executive Councillor approved the management of residents' car parking spaces that are provided on housing land within neighbourhoods and how car parking will be managed in future new builds. It was quite essential to get something like this in place, particularly if any of you are familiar with the car parking situation at, at venues like Hanover and Princess. 
So that was um, something that will aff could affect tenants and leaseholders depending on the areas that they're in. The, the other thing which has appeared, has become controversial is the progress report that the executive councillor approved towards the housing revenue account estate regeneration program and this is the um, program that initially is considering the future of Hanover and Princess Courts and Kingsway but can I please assure leaseholders and in the broader um, picture tenants that your representatives are ensuring that consultation is to be at the maximum and what we were able to achieve before the report actually went to the housing scrutiny committee about the about the regeneration of these various sites was that the tenants and leaseholders in Hanover and Princess Courts and Kingsway were actually informed about it by letter before it went to committee. As a result of that, the, there is the Housing Development Agency has set up a, a consultation working group. Diana Mins is the tenant representative on that. She is our vice chair on the Housing Scrutiny Committee and I'm your leaseholder representative, and we are currently meeting fortnightly in order to progress um, consultation with residents that may be affected. Just one other quick thing, there's a bit more to it than just sitting down at the Housing Scrutiny Committee meetings, and prior to that, going through all the paperwork, which is sometimes 300 odd pages. Um, we do, I do attend the monthly estate liaison meetings, which is the opportunity to meet with the uh, cleaning contractor, window cleaning contractor and grounds maintenance contractors, which are all things that leaseholders pay uh, a service charge for and also we do have uh, regular meetings with the housing development agency about the new build and more recently uh, in the consultation working group the focus has been on the effect on leaseholders of the regeneration um, proposals that are but there is nothing set in stone I hope that's given you a, a, a brief overview of what I've been up to on your behalf. And I'm very pleased to answer any questions, but you can get the full detail of all these um, meetings and reports and uh, decisions on the council's website. Thanks, Diane. Uh, so we just had one question in the chat from Matthew um, and it says, is there any way of getting minutes from those monthly leaseholder meetings and their reports? Are you referring to, is Matthew referring to the estate liaison? Uh, yes, uh, basically uh, I was listening to your, um, your comments yes, about part, not, part of Unlike but. this meeting, they're not in inverted commas, public meetings, but I can reassure you that um, we do make sure the contractors are fully aware of any shortcomings in their delivery. OK, uh, my main, uh, main thought was uh, regarding the car parking questions and you said it was a uh, touchy subject, so I'd be interested on hearing oh. what uh, things are about that. Um, I can't tell uh, the car that the car parking wouldn't uh, be a subject for the monthly estate liaison meetings, 
but if you like to refer to the report that's on the council's website, which is quite short and very readable, it will give you all the information about the car parking. Okay, that's great, thanks. Okay, so I think that's all the questions for you, Diane. So thank you for giving the overview. Um, so the next item um, is for me. So I'm just to introduce myself. My name is Emily Downey. I'm the Resident Engagement and Performance Manager within the Housing Service. So I'm responsible for managing the engagement strategies with our tenants and leaseholders. Um, so just to give you a brief overview of um, the kind of things my service has been doing since we last met. Um, in October of last year, we conducted a resident survey, so you will have all received that by post. Um, we received the results from that in January of this year, so since then I've been working with uh, officers to um, make corresponding improvements based on that feedback. Um, we're using Open Door to communicate the, the changes that we've made using the feedback. So we are implementing a double page spread, which essentially works as a, a you said we did function to give an overview of the statistics and the feedback we received and then what we've done as a result of that. So um, just to give you uh, an idea of the sort of improvements I've made within the RI service, uh, so it's resident involvement, sorry. Um, the main feedback was about communication and about uh, raising the profile of resident involvement opportunities. So in relation to communication, we have created a new resident e-newsletter. This goes out three times a year and it's in, um, published in between the editions of Open Door just to bridge that gap. Um, it's a two page newsletter and gives an overview generally of um, updates to the housing service, to resident involvement and just general information that may have come up that would be useful for residents to know during that period. So um, if you don't currently receive the e-newsletter and you would like to, please let me know and I can add you to the mailing list and then you'll receive it automatically whenever it's published. Um, in terms of raising the profile of resident involvement opportunities, we have been doing this through the publications that we receive, so or that we send out. So um, just to give a brief reminder of some of the opportunities that are available for residents to get in, involved with, we have uh, resident inspectors. So their main function is to monitor and scrutinise uh, the delivery of estate contracts on estates. Um, we have open door editorial panel, so that's an opportunity for residents to get together to um, edit and, and go over the content, the design, the look of the magazine, if it's readable, and suggest changes. Um, we have the residence panel, and this is um, an opportunity for residents to feedback and scrutinise the uh, performance improvements and policy improvements. And we have uh, the Roman Voids meeting. So this is an opportunity for residents to get involved with the um, estates and facilities team to scrutinise the plan maintenance and uh, the voids process and the turnaround time of void properties. Uh, we also have um, the estate improvement scheme, which Will and Jamie touched on. So this is um, a, a dedicated pot of funding that we receive um, every year for five years. So it's, we have a million pounds a year to make improvements on estates. And it's a really useful avenue to make um, substantial changes that have come from residents and from councillors and officers to make these um, localised improvements. So they range from things like bike stores to security improvements. Uh, we've done all kinds of things, improving fencing, um, I've got a massive range of things. So if you have an idea of an improvement you'd like to see on your estate, we would certainly like to hear from you and we can take any suggestions forward. And if it's viable, then we will we will work to deliver those. Uh, so we plan to deliver the next resident survey in October of 22. So it's a very small gap between the, the last one. So we're hopeful that we will see improvements um, based on the statistics from from your feedback, um, because each of the services are working hard to try and deliver on those. Um, and in terms of other involvement, uh, sorry, changes from the resident involvement team, we um, there has been a, a restructure within the team. Uh, this has involved the policy and performance officers across housing and the resident involvement team coming together into one unit. Uh, this is to enable greater level of resident involvement in the policy development and performance improvements across the, the um, housing service. So we're hopeful that that will have a really positive impact. Um, and as uh, Diane alluded to earlier, we have also written a new resident involvement strategy. And this guides the way that we deliver resident involvement in the following three years. 
So um, if you would like to get involved in any way or you would like more information about the opportunities available, there is a dedicated resident involvement web page. Um, alternatively, you're welcome to get in touch with me at the um, email address that you previously contacted and um, I'm happy to arrange a, a dedicated meeting with you to discuss things further. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Alternatively, more than welcome to contact me at a later date. OK, so I don't think there are any questions in the chat, but now we're moving on to the final item, um, which is leaseholder questions and answers. So this pretty much falls under the any other business that I was referring to earlier. So I know there were some earlier questions uh, which residents asked, which haven't been uh, uh, answered yet. So, Martin, you've just put your hand up. Would you like to go ahead? Uh, good afternoon. Yes, just going. I missed the start of the meeting. Apologies. Just a correction to the minutes of last year's meeting under 2.4. Uh, it should have said £1,200, not 12000 OK, thank you for that. We'll have that noted and corrected. And uh, that was split between six um, flats within the, within the block, not, not, uh, not personally. Uh, and uh, the second question was about um, car parking again and electrical charging points for residents of flats and whether there's been any um, yeah, work done on that in the last 12 months. Okay, I'm just thinking of the best officer to answer that question. We do have a parking services team who I know are working to deliver more electric charging points across the city. Um, in relation to our estate specifically, Will, do you have any kind of update or have you had any recent contact with the, the relevant team? If not, we can take it away and, and send you some, some information at a later date, Martin. Yeah, I think that's the best we can do. And yeah, whereabouts are you, please? Uh, Fison Road Estate. Oh. OK, yeah it's, yeah, it's useful to get the nominations. The first thing we've tackled is making it easier for people who yeah, live in um, um, yeah, one of what well, looks like a house, really. They can have a tenant alteration, but the flats, yeah, converting the car parks is proving more complex. So I think we'll have to update you. Thank you. OK, thank you. OK, uh, Jing, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Emily. Right, uh, I have a question for the garden maintenance. Um, I live, uh, my flat is in the first floor. Uh, I don't have a garden, but my neighbor downstairs have a garden. He is a council tenant. And so far, for over 10 years, he hasn't done any garden work. The, the grass and the trees have overgrown so much and blocked away our way into our, our building. So um, I have written to the council, um, this holder manager, um, early this year, after a few weeks, and it hasn't been resolved. And what they have replied me is saying they will ask someone to talk to the, the tenant. But in reality, the tenant, I spoke to him, and he have hand injury. He said he can't do any garden work. So, and he has he said there's no funding from the council can help anything because my flat has been left vacant and I couldn't let it out. And so the viewers all been put off by this situation. It looks very run down the area, very untidy. So I end up, I, I spent personally 750 pounds to ask a gardener to, to take the, all the junks and the overgrown grass out. But the thing is the weeds keep going back. I cannot pay every year. I, I, I can't afford to pay for it. So, um, it's not communal area, but it's council owned property and uh, the garden. I'm just wondering whether um, you can help to look at any this issue <coughs> with um, some support for the council tenant because it has a fact, not just his own garden, but it's all all the residents around it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that one's quite a, a well, the situation is if, if it's a, a tenanted property and the garden is linked to that, the, the flat underneath you, um, if it's not a communal area, obviously our grounds maintenance team can't cover that area. However, if um, if the garden, if the, the resident who um, lives in that flat is unable to do it because they're um, disabled or, or you said they, they have a, a brain injury or something. Um, hand injury, then, both hands. Hand injury. OK, so if they're physically unable to do it, 
then um, if I if I'll have a conversation with you um, outside of the meeting, but there is a service we can provide, which is grass cutting. Um, that's a, a free service to city council tenants who um, who are unable to cut their own grass, for example, you know, if they're if they're in infirm or, or have a disability or, or something that means that they can't physically do it themselves. Yeah. There is a service available. So if that person is um, eligible, then p- potentially we can assist in, in providing a grass cutting service. But I'll, um, I'll contact you separately and then we can further the discussion. Thank you so much. OK, we have um, Colin next. Hi, can you hear me? Um, yeah, so I I missed the start of the meeting, uh, but can I have an update on the current uh, communal works being carried out in Molewood Close? And sort of how far along are they? Or is that somewhat someone I could email about that? Uh, yeah, so um, my colleague Will Barfield gave an overview of planned works at the beginning of the meeting. This this uh, meeting is being recorded, so once it goes onto the website, you can watch it back and, and get an update on what he said, if, if that will be useful. And if then if you have further questions, you can get in touch with us um, to, to answer those directly. Okay, who's the best person to email? Um, if you if you email the resident involvement email address initially, and then I can pass it on to the relevant officer from there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so is there any final question? Oh, um, from Deborah. Oh, hello. Um, I'm so, I've only just joined the meeting. I'm really sorry. I'm in between work meetings. Um, and so if I'm asking something that's already been asked, just tell me and I'll catch the recording. I'm sorry. But um, I was um, my, my flat is on Tenby Close in Cherry Hinton. And um, we had a big outbreak of antisocial behaviour this time last year with people, um, young people sitting in the stairwells and on the landings um, overnight smoking drugs and leaving ginormous amount of rubbish blah blah blah. and I just wondered whether if there's a big estate improvement program if the time has come to put doors on the blocks proper doors with entry phones into the flat flats and I know that's not cheap but and as leaseholders, we would bear the cost of that or largely. But for me, I think that would be worth it. Uh, apart from security, I think there's also the whole heat retention in an era of climate change, etc., that would benefit as well if those doors were put in. And I just wondered whether um, there's any appetite for that. That's my question. Thanks, Deborah. Um, so in an area not far from your estate, we have had a similar issue where there's been antisocial behaviour in communal blocks. Um, the first avenue that we've explored is putting they they just gates, essentially metal gates on the, the two entry and exit um, corridors. And they contain a little sign saying private residence only. Um, so that's kind of the first step we've taken to see if creating a more definitive boundary has a positive effect on the antisocial behaviour. And I think it has had, um, I think, Will, could you, can, can you give any feedback about whether you've had a good response to that? Yeah, I think we have had a good response. Um, but yes, as you say, that is, are you in one of those blocks, Deborah? Yeah, I am. And actually, we have had a good res- uh, that has definitely yeah. been affected. Yeah. Um, so I'm just thinking more broadly around just generally, it feels more secure and the heat retention, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so um, in, there is another area in the city where we have put uh, full like full security gates in the um, entry and exit ways around the city. However, they're never um, they're not like a, if you imagine a new block, which is fully enclosed and, and it retains yeah. heat like you're talking about. They're never like that insofar that it would retain the heat. They're, they're metal security gates that are bars, essentially. Oh, so um, we wouldn't be able to retrofit the, the kind that you're talking about because 
um, the design of the building and the age of the buildings generally mean that that wouldn't be particularly easy, but the um, the metal security gates have been an option. So if, if the antisocial behaviour is particularly bad, bad and there's no um, avenue or sort of viable way to, to do that just with uh, the smaller mechanisms like smaller gates, then that could be considered. But we generally um, appoint our police design and out crime team to have a look um, to begin with to see whether they think it would be effective because we don't want to jump jump from zero to 100 when there may be some other strategies we can use in between because we want to make or retain the look of the the blocks as well so that they're nice to live in and they don't feel I don't know like prison like for example so we want to keep them you know looking nice and nice yeah. for residents so um, if there is a particular problem we can ask the police design and out crime team to come and have a look at your block and um, and sort of further that conversation if that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, touch wood at the moment, the antisocial stuff did stop. And I have to say, everybody kind of really responded really quickly to the trouble on the estate. So no complaints on that front. Um, and it might have been because it was wham bang in the middle of COVID and lots of places that people would go, young people would go, they couldn't go to, who knows. But yeah. OK, so thank you. yeah, thank you for raising it. If the problem does yeah. reoccur, then then please do get in touch and we'll we'll, we'll work with you as best we can to uh, to try and get rid of that. OK, thank you. Yeah. Trying to put my hand down. <laughs> Won't go. Okay. Do we have any final questions? I'm just going to look through the chat to see if there was any raised earlier that we haven't um, raised just yet. Uh, so those, the residents that asked about uh, planned works in particular areas, I don't know if Will Barfield is still on the call, let me just have a look. If he's not, I can ask him to respond to you directly with an answer about those locations. Yeah, he's no longer on the call, so I'll ask him to respond um, about Edgecombe and then there's a particular postcode that was listed as well. Okay, is there any final questions for us? No? Okay, well, um, thank you very much for joining us all today. And it's been really nice to, to meet with you and see some faces. Um, and we'll be having the, um, the next leaseholder meeting uh, in a year's time. If you have any suggestions about times or, or dates, then please do let us know. Um, this seems to be a, of a, a particularly effective time. We've had a good turnout today. Um, but if you have any other suggestions, we'll be welcome to hear them. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll draw the meeting to a close. Thank you for joining us. No, no, I've got.